Hi, Greg with Gree here with another quick tip for you. Today I want to talk about doing preventive maintenance to Gree Mini Splits. The very first thing I'm going to tell you to do when you get there is turn that machine on. If you're in cooling mode, give it at least a five degree demand. Lower the temperature five degrees below the indoor room temperature. Make sure the fan's on auto. Let it run for at least 10 minutes. Take your air entering and your leaving temperature. You should have a 20 to 25 degree TD across that unit. If you're doing it in winter time and you're doing heating mode, give it at least a five degree demand above indoor room temperature. Auto for the fan again, you should get a 25 to 30 degree rise. I would do this before I cleaned any filters, coils, anything. That sets your baseline. Now, by doing that temperature split, that's gonna help you determine whether or not you actually need to put gauges on it. Let's say you check that and you get a zero degree temperature split. Well, that tells you, okay, we got something else to look at. It's a good possibility that compressor's not even coming on. So I'd be talking to the consumer. Have they seen any air codes? Because if you're getting no temperature split at all, either it's out of gas, and I would expect you to get an FO air code for that, or it's extremely low on refrigerant, and you're not getting any temperature split. Well, at that point, before I did any cleaning or anything, then yes, I would put a gauge on it. Let's say you're only getting a 10 degree split a 15 degree split next thing we want to do is clean the entire system so check the indoor filter make sure it's clean make sure the evaporator is clean make sure the blower wheel is clean make sure the outdoor condenser coil is clean then restart that unit run it again recheck your temperature split if your temperature split doesn't come up put a gauge on there and see what's going on so i've had this unit running for at least 10 minutes i've got at least a five degree demand so be very careful when you shove a thermometer in here, don't shove it in too far. Because if you do, you're gonna shove it right into the blower wheel. And you can use a thermocouple, you can just use a probe type thermometer like I'm using, it doesn't really matter. I'm at about 51 degrees, leaving that unit. Then I can just set the thermometer up top here because that's where my cold air return is. I'm at 71, almost 72 degrees. It's about 21 degree drop. That's actually pretty darn good. Shut it off. Grab you a light. Now is when you really want to get a good look here. Pull your top up. Check your evaporator coil. Make sure the evaporator coil is clean. Right up above, you'll see if that filter is clean. Regardless, I would pull that filter out and wash it. Take your louvers. Open that louver up. Look up in there and check that blower wheel. Make sure that blower wheel is clean. If that blower wheel is not clean, that needs to be cleaned. I just did a video on doing a deep clean and how you can clean that with a miniature pressure washer. And you don't even gotta take the unit out of the house. So that actually looks pretty good. I'm not expecting any refrigerant problems or anything like that. I would not be putting a gauge on this machine. If the unit was dirty, then you might want to get out your mighty brackets, pull that head loose, make sure we don't have any drain problems after you clean the machine. Uh, if you ever get one of those units where the customers complain that it's dripping out of it, even if it doesn't look real dirty, if you're getting water dripping off of it, I would do a deep clean to that whole evaporator section and the, and the blower wheel, and then make sure the drain is clear as well. So from that, we're gonna move outside. I'm gonna take you through the maintenance checks that I'd be doing on the outdoor unit. Well, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is, take the unit apart. Just take all the panels off. Let's get a good look at this machine. So I pull the cover off this board and just inspect the back of it. This board looks like brand new, but what I'm looking for there is any burn spots that might be in the board, anything that looks like it's been overheated. Are we getting any critters in there? Anything like that. So I don't see anything like that on this machine. So. The other thing I'll be doing is just an inspection to the components in here. Do I see any loose connections or anything? I'm just inspecting for any wires that might have been chewed by mice, anything like that. Don't really see anything like that. Should be good. You can kind of look at some of the, the misters that are strapped on, make sure that they're, you know, the wires are not frayed and they're still intact. Uh, you could actually pull the backside panel off if you think you've seen anything there. But just looking in through the top of here, 
nothing's really been messed with so I'm not going to go in deeper then the next thing I would tell you to look at on the back side of the coil just look and see how clean or dirty that coil is but regardless I would wash it the great thing about these units is they are side discharge all your dirt's going to be on the back side of this coil because the fan is pulling the air through that coil so it should be pretty easily to wash you really shouldn't have any debris or anything if you do see any of that debris in there i would take the front panel off and get that out of there keep in mind i did have the disconnect pulled so when i was looking at all this there was no power applied to it that's what i recommend you do as well and after you're done cleaning it get it all reassembled then i would go back and run the unit again and recheck that temperature drop if you clean it all up and you're still only getting like a 10 or 15 degree TD across that indoor unit, whether it be heating or cooling, then yeah, at that point, now we need to put a set of gauges on it. So, agree, we're by your side.